Recall that when we discussed the mechanisms of nucleophilic substitution reactions, we divided up nucleophilic substitution into two kind of sub-processes, leaving group departure and coordination of the nucleophile. And these two processes could either occur in a concerted fashion, that was SN2, or a stepwise fashion, that was the SN1 mechanism. A similar mechanistic dichotomy exists in elimination reactions. We can think of elimination as involving two distinct processes, leaving group departure, and rather than nucleophile association, as in substitutions, deprotonation by the base is the second stage of the elimination mechanism. The key to the mechanistic dichotomy in elimination reactions is whether these two processes occur in a concerted manner, that is, at the same time, or in a stepwise manner, with leaving group departure occurring before deprotonation. The concerted process, by analogy to the SN2 reaction, is called E2. It's a bimolecular elimination process. The stepwise process is unimolecular and is called E1, in fact, for the exact same reason that SN1 is called SN1, as we'll see. The empirical evidence for this mechanistic dichotomy in elimination reactions has to do with the different kinetics of the two reactions, depending on the structures of the electrophile and nucleophile. So for example, when we use methoxide as the base and isopropyl bromide as the electrophile, the resulting elimination process, and this is a set of reaction conditions, as we'll see later, where elimination competes with substitution, the kinetics of the elimination depend on both the alkyl halide and on the base. The rate law is first order in both the alkyl halide and the base. When we change to a much milder base, methanol, we arrive at a different rate law that depends on only the concentration of alkyl halide. Base, methanol, is zero order. The change in orders suggests a change in mechanism. And this is exactly analogous to what we've already seen in nucleophilic substitutions. Over the next couple of videos, we'll survey these two mechanisms in detail. Because the rate law has two terms in the first case, implying a bimolecular rate determining step, the first mechanism is called E2, and because the second mechanism involves only the alkyl halide in the rate determining step, a unimolecular rate determining step, the second mechanism is called E1.